Okay, I haven't done this in a while. I hope I don't mess it up. So this is a uh, prototype of the next lesson. Prototype, is, is that a correct term? So I'm just going to show a couple of steps that I used to get here. Let's see. Here I have a sheet of paper the size that I was going to use. And I have some flat, roughly drawn flowers that I cut out. So I'm going to just try different ways of arranging them on the paper. Some of them running off. To see what kind of composition I can get that I might like. And what part of what I'm looking for, of course, is some really interesting negative space around here. So, um, kind of have that there. But what I what I wound up with was doing something like this, and this. So that got me some nice shapes. There's a nice shape in here. Uh, this isn't quite like what I wound up drawing, but that's close. So that gave me a, a way to plan a design. One could even take different stuff cut out of magazines and kind of arrange them around and make a composition. All right, I'm gonna make a couple of suggestions on tracing something like this. So I have an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper because that's what they have at the, you know, that's a standard size. But the sheet underneath is smaller. So here's what I do. I do not ever wrap this around and try to tape it from the back like that. That usually winds up in stuff twisting and squiggling around in ways that are not good. Uh, instead, I get my position on here the way I want it, hold it, turn it over, and then with it laying flat, see I've run the tape across the back. So, because uh, a number of times in class I have people trying to do something a little different that just really is pretty awkward for them. Uh, okay, so I've got my, uh, uh, not carbon paper, uh, graphite paper. And here's the thing, when you trace this one, I really suggest, I really suggest a light tracing we really don't want dark, heavy lines in this one. Uh, you know, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So the only thing I've got to suggest about that is that when you trace, make a line or two, and then look to see how dark it's coming out. See, that's pretty strong, and I didn't think I pressed down very hard. You know, different sheets of graphite paper work differently. Let's see how that looks. That, see, that's much paler. That looks almost like I drew it lightly with my pencil. That's what I want. Uh, these papers vary, and as they age and get used, they vary. So it's best to always test first. Okay, I'm going to trace this, and then I'll be back. Okay, for this, I'm going to use a round brush. And what I'm demonstrating here is painting a stripe because... I want to show some things about that or about making a good watercolor painting in general. So let's start out, let's do three stripes. And this is just a principle that you can apply anywhere when you're painting with watercolor and, and you'll wind up with a better painting. So let's say, I'm, I'm gonna be working with ultramarine. So let's put out some ultramarine. And I want 
Let's see. I want a nice juicy mixture here. There we go. I'm gonna need quite a bit, so let's best to pre-wet these colors if you anytime you're working with some pretty rich color you want to pre-wet these colors for a while all right so the first thing i'm going to do first thing i'm going to do is make sure i've got a viva paper towel on hand all right So I'm just going to paint in, Let's see if I'm in place here, yeah. I'm just going to paint in a, a stripe, a blue stripe, because that's what we have here. We have blue stripes. Let's make sure that brush is loaded up. So I've got a nice juicy application here. And I wouldn't worry about tracing those stripes with a ruler. I made them with a ruler, but they really don't need to be perfect. In fact, it's best if they're not. So there is a blue stripe. Okay, that's one. Okay, so now we've got a nice blue stripe here. And it's got some nice granulation in it, but it's just... That's not as exciting as one of these, not by a long shot. So, let's see, what else can we do? Well, I picked a color. I'll just pick rose, quinacridone rose. And I'll get it, well, in this particular case, I, I think I'll try to get it about the same uh, concentration as what I have here with the blue all right so this is dry paper now I'm not pre-wetting this let's get a little more water in that blue I think all right so let's go ahead and let's put in our blue stripe on camera, isn't it? Yes. Okay. My paper is buckled up here. This is the back side of something else. All right. So there. So then let's wash that brush out. Or you, you could use a different brush if you wanted. Let's pick up some of the, oh, well, that may be a bit more than I wanted. I just wanted a hint. That's pretty strong. Let's squeeze that out and pull some of that up. Put some blue back in. Yeah, I want the differences here to be subtle. And I don't want it everywhere because everywhere just changes it and makes it a different color. I want that nice, subtle soft change of color going on see now that's a more exciting stripe however it's still not the best stripe so let's do something else let's paint in our stripe Here's where the real art comes in. Painting our stripe. You notice I'm painting it in. It's really juicy. And that's important because when we put this other color in, we want them to move and merge together nicely. Okay, so put a little rose in again. I need to watch it, not get it too strong. And don't put it everywhere. Maybe a, just a touch down here. Boy, that's strong stuff. I guess that's okay. I, I would have liked it to be just a little pale. Let's put a little more blue in on top of it. 
what I could have done is I could have mixed a little, you know what would be a good idea? I could mix a little blue into this, make it a little bit more of a purple so that the color difference between the two of them isn't quite so strong. That's what I'll do when I paint it. So here's the thing. Okay, well, that's just like the other one, isn't it? Yeah, so far. Okay. And, and I may give this a few seconds to start to dry here. Maybe I'll even pull fresh water out here just to be a purist. Well, let's see. Let's see how it's going to act. If I blot it a little bit. Oh, okay, there's a little place. Maybe if I add a little water, what is, how much of it's going to flow out? That's what I want to see. See right there, it's not flowing very much. Well, that's okay. Then it's at the right stage. So let's just pull a little color out here. I could do some blotting too if I wanted. Because I don't want stark white out here anyway doesn't mean that I'm going to change all the edges on this. I'm not. But I might break up a few places. I might blot a little bit internally. Or I might decide, oh, no, I think I want that a little stronger. Let's add a little more color back in there. Hmm. Okay, so let's work on this side before that starts to dry. Because, you know, if it gets too dry, then it's not going to, uh, then it's not going to move the color the way I want. And you notice I don't get it all the way covered because I want those little pops of white in here. I just want a little something more happening there. I might choose to let it that much run out. Someplace else I might just keep it really soft. Or maybe I might even oh, add in a touch of color. No, I don't like that. I really like my major color in here. And then this out here is just, okay. So that's a more exciting stripe. You could, like I said, you could also come in and do some blotting. You could blot in here and, and just give it, when you do that, see the, the paint will flow back in some, but maybe not quite all the way. So you get a little bit of activity here. That's the thing is, we're getting a little bit of texture but it's not too much texture. There's not too much contrast in it. So, so we went from a boring stripe to a better stripe to a, well, I think it's a beautiful stripe. Now, you'll notice that when I did this piece that I colored in the tops of these stripes. <clears throat> that's because it is so easy to lose your place <clears throat> and start doing the wrong ones. Now, it would be okay if you did the others, but if you do some of one and some of another, well, anyway, it could turn into a problem. So my suggestion is that when painting this, just line these stripes up here like that. Okay, and that'll help you keep your place. I had to do that for myself, and I designed it, but I found that I was starting to do the wrong stripes part of the time. All right, so here's the thing. I'm going to, I hope I've got enough water in this one. I've got some little crumbles in there. That could be a problem. Okay, nice blue. So let's start. I guess I'll start over here on the left. So this is a little harder because these, these stripes are have things in the way. And I have to paint around them. So that, that makes it a little easier going with a round brush here. Okay, I want that really juicy okay we go there well if I skip a spot or two and leave some little twinkles that's okay they're actually going to come out before I get through anyway 
So let's do this stripe. So let's add in a little of the other color. And you know, it wouldn't be a bad idea to use a different brush. Don't want it everywhere. I may pull up a little of that. Okay. So it's just a tiny bit too soon to start smudging it around. So let's go ahead and start this stripe. Remember, when you're working really wet like this, one of the things it does is it gives you a little bit more time to work because you don't want this to start partially drying on you yet. Now, one of the advantages, though, of having to paint around all these flowers, I didn't load my brush up well enough. Okay. One of the advantages of having to paint around all these flowers is that you don't have to paint the whole stripe at a time. So I think, so I'm just raking my brush off here like this, getting the extra fluid out of it, because I think I'll pull a little of that up. And I'm not gonna wash that out because I wanna save paint. So let's see, let's just little color in there and maybe just a touch of color here well didn't pick up enough keep messing with it there all right so let's see where we are with this hmm. no because I've got such a tiny stripe in there I think I need to finish this Because that tiny white space in there is not giving me much room. Let's pull a little of that up and move it over here. for a different size brush here. Okay. So let's pull up just a little oh, touch of color there. Maybe just a little bit there. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, let's see how much that's going to spread. So it's not spreading too much, so let's just soften some, but not all of the edges here. This is such a small space here. You see how I'm squeezing the brush out and I'm pulling a little of that up. I'm handling it just a little more gently in here. Oh, I don't like that. Let's do a little blotting here. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I gotta do something with this side. And see the white space here is larger so I can get a little more relaxed. See I've blotted both the white space and the blue space there. Oh, that's nice. That's very nice. I like that. Okay, let's come down here. Just give that a little blot. And oh my goodness, well this 
you know, if I get that over the stem. Oh, dear. Well, I did get it over the stem. I think we can live with that. That's just... So I just moved some of that color, and I didn't do a nice break-the-edge kind of thing down here. We would like to break that edge just a little bit more. So you see, a stripe is not just a stripe. Hmm. This is a little bit darker than my last one. All right, here we go again. So, like I said, if we get a little bit over these stems, I don't think that that's a problem at all. It might even be useful to us. I want to keep it off of the flower as much as I can. I don't like that spot right there. That's too dark. Sit, play it over in there. Let's just add a little water. Let's just add a little water. I'm talking with a brush in my mouth. That doesn't work. There. So that's about right. And I've got it dry enough, it's probably not going to creep over there now. And that's the bottom of the page. Well, there's, nope, there's no stripe showing there. know if that needs it. Well, you see how that's just sitting there not moving? I don't like that, so I'm going to tickle it a little bit. There we go. That's still too wet to mess with, so let's go on to the next stripe. This is the harder side of it, I think. Hmm. Something's wrong there. Oh, okay. No, it's not. See, that looked like a narrow stripe there, but that's because it is going around something. And once you get going with this, you don't have to really follow this at the top. You know it's every other stripe. But, and don't start in the middle. Start at one end or the other. I'm going this way because I'm right-handed. And that's easier for me. this. That's almost ridiculous. See that little bit of stripe there? Okay. A little bit of color. Some people are going to want a neater stripe than what I do. That's okay, but try a little bit of this. Wash my brush out. Yeah, let's, so let's try pulling this stripe. Let's soften some of the edge there. there. 
And here, like I said, I don't mind if it gets on the stems at all. So, okay, here's another problem that I have with some of y'all. And that is you use a paper towel too long and it gets all dirty and you keep using it and messing stuff up. So I'm getting, for this, I want a clean paper towel. Now this is a big white area, and I don't think we want to leave it just white, white. So I may pull quite a bit of color over in here. And I'm just painting over that stem. Again, I'm not covering up every bit of this. Some areas are left totally white. We don't want to totally get rid of our whites. And here again, I don't care. You know, you could even, if you had clean water, you could even spatter clean water into this and get some other little things happening that might be fun. Because, remember, this is about fun. I think. Okay. So now we're skipping way over here. I don't know if that was the best design to do it that way, but uh, I did. The major thing I was looking for was to have stripes of random width and random spaces in between the stripes. Just go over this stuff. No, I guess I won't. Can't make up my mind. It's not important. Yeah, that works much better than, see, see I've got a mixture here, which I have to stir up every now and then. But see, I put some blue into that, uh, into that uh, Queen Rose, so that, there, that's nice, that's about right. Let's encourage it to move around a little bit more, though. Sometimes, some colors will flow better than others. It'll flow better on some papers than others. I'm working on 300 pound here, but I did the original on 140, which lets you, 140 will let you kind of do this kind of thing a little bit better. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, some spots turn out better than other spots. Let's just bring some of this over here. Oh, down there. I mean, I want some just pale hints there. So I really like this block. Yeah, that did that did great down there. Okay. Yeah, this is turning out really well. I always worry when I'm filming. 
filming. It's no film anymore, more, is there? I always one worry when I video that I'll mess up and have to start over. And I don't want to have to start over. You know, spice it out a little bit. Just, again, you, you're, you're doing this, but you don't want it to just sit there in polka dots like this. So, I'm going to encourage it to move around a little bit. Just put a little dot over there. You know, you're designing this. You put it down, you look, you see what's happening, what you like, what you don't like. And then you, quote, encourage it. And think a little bit of encouraging a teenager to do the dishes. I just blot those. See, and that creates a, a transition there because you have a lighter area there. You know, it comes from over here. Transitions are really important. So, bring that to the edge. Okay. This needs a little something down here. So what I need is I need just a really pale little bit of color. And I can just barely dot some little bit down through here. I want a touch of the red. Okay. There. Okay. Uh, just a touch up here, too, because that's such a wide expanse. All right. So, now this needs to sit. So, that is your Magnificent Stripes, but also, it's just a tutorial in breaking something up, making something boring better just by giving it a little bit of texture, but this is nevertheless what I call subtle texture. It may not feel subtle to you right now, but it is.